Jesus. Welcome everybody to the poor consecration. Welcome, good morning, good morning. So many of you on already this morning, great to see you coming on. You have made it to the fourth day of this consecration. For some of you, you're doing what you have never done before. Amen, but we're doing it together and we're doing it corporately as we seek the face of the Lord this morning. I can see some of you still coming in. I hope that you had a good rest. I pray that the Lord has been meeting with you and speaking with you over the course of this time. And we thank God that we're able to rise another day and uh, and to be in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. Just going to give a little bit more time for some of you to come in this morning. Good morning, Donna. Morning, Kelly. Morning, Colleen. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Z. Colin, good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Maria, good to see you as well this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I rise to seek thee. Amen. In the book of Psalms. And we are up here this morning to seek the face of the Lord. Good morning, Denise. Shanice, good to have you on. Samuel, remember, whoever your accountability partner is, you want to be contacting them this morning, making sure that they're rising up. Amen. Just checking in on them, making sure they haven't slept through the alarm. Pastor Andrew Wignall, good to see you on. Amen. Good to have you this morning. Well, welcome to the poor consecration. We are at day four and the Lord has been speaking powerfully to us already. We've had so many testimonies of what the Lord has done in the lives of so many people. And um, we can't wait to share much of that with you, especially as we come toward the shut-in uh, tomorrow. Amen. Uh, just a quick one. Let's head over to um, the uh, fasting for today. Of course, we are fasting from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, we are on Thursday. Uh, so let's have a look uh, at what the guidelines are now. I Think today, just bear with me a moment. Um, <clears throat> all right, so today is vegetables and water. Thank you so much. Vegetables and water. Thank you, Gina. Amen. Um, I know for some of you, you've already been on the dry fast since uh, earlier on this week. So for those of you who feel that God is pushing you to make a deeper sacrifice in terms of your consecration, then please flow as the spirit leads you. Amen. For those who are our babes in Christ, who are doing this consecration for the first time, if vegetables and water is a sacrifice for you, you want to honor it, please do. Amen. But for those of you who may feel this may be a bit challenging and you're not quite ready, then maybe stick to what you did yesterday. OK, but I want to challenge you. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for what God's going to say this morning. Let's open ourselves up in prayer. Amen. Um, and prepare. No, the 20, the fastest tomorrow, the long term fast, Carissa. Carissa, someone told me that you've been you've been really disciplined with your fasting over this time. So we thank God. Young people, I just, you know what, this was in my spirit to do last night. So let's do it this morning. I want you, if you're a young person to say, it's me, just put it up. And I want someone else, if you're older than them, just tag them, put a word of encouragement. Okay. It's me. If you're a young person on here doing consecration, just put it's me. And uh, other members of family, the TPC family, I want you to give a word of encouragement to the young people. Just put something in there, throw something in there, amen, to encourage them through this time of fasting and consecration. Good. Rosalind, good to have you on. Tiffany, Carissa, Shakora, Gabija, Alexandria, Samuel, Chantel, Carlene, all of these are our young people joining us just for consecration all this week. Uh, Rachel. Hallelujah, we thank God for you. Amari, we honor you. We thank God for you. Alexandria, we thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Chloe, Angela, 
We are proud of our young people who have been waking up and making the sacrifice. Amen. Put something in there of an encouragement to them uh, this morning. Amen. Amen. Keep going, young people, Cayenne said. Bless the Lord. Amen. The Lord will bless your faithfulness, Elder Diane said. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. <clears throat> we are going to open up in prayer. And I'm really happy to have someone who I really respect, really love and honor. Elder Sonia Hogg, who will be leading us into a time of prayer this morning as we seek the face of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your divine presence. We thank you for your divine spirit. We thank you that you've chosen to wake us up this morning, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for new mercies, for new graces. We thank you, Jesus, that you have given us life. Hallelujah. Father, we don't take it lightly that you have set our face to seek you this week. You've set our hearts to turn to you this week. We thank you already for the great works that you have done. We thank you for the ways in which you have turned our hearts, turned our minds. We thank you for the deliverances you have already done. We thank you for the healing you have already brought. We thank you for the transformation and change that you have already brought. And this week, as we come into this time of consecration, Father, we pray that our sacrifice, we pray that our focus, our hearts would be lifted up to you, God, that Lord Jesus, you would render our hearts, Father God, Hallelujah, not just our garments. You will change our hearts, transform our hearts this morning. We thank you that as we observe this fast, dear Heavenly Father, that you, Lord God, have been speaking to us. The ears have been opening, eyes have been opening, hearts have been opening, spirits have been opening. Father, there's been a stirring of gifts. There's been changes and transitions. And so as we come to you, we want to thank you, Lord God, for you are holy, you are mighty, you are faithful. You are the consistent one. You have kept us even when we weren't keeping ourselves. And you have wooed us at a time, Lord God, to yield us back unto yourself this morning. And so we say, God, we agree with the timing of heaven in this season. We say yes to your will for us and yes to your way. Whatever you want to speak to us this morning, our hearts are open. Whatever you want to do through us this morning, our spirits are open. Before we even hear hear another word. Come on, open your mouths, TPC, where you are. I want to tell the Lord, yes. Tell him, Father, whatever your plan is for my life, yes. I trust you this morning. My mind is alert. My spirit is open, God. Hallelujah. Help me to be sensitive to your voice. Help me to yield to your will. Help me to yield to your way. Not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. On earth this day as it in this is in heaven. Hallelujah. Establish my way in your word, I pray. And we'll be sure to give you the glory. We'll be sure to give you the honor. And we'll be sure to give you all of the praise. Amen. Come on, put something in the atmosphere of your home, your workplace. Hallelujah. Wherever you are in your car, maybe on your way to work, put something in the atmosphere. Release a sound in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. This morning as you are on your way. Hallelujah. And as we come to the Lord in this time of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to uh, introduce and bring on um, Elder Sonia Hogg, who will be leading us into our time of prayer. Prepare your hearts in Jesus' name. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the, Lord. Bless bless the, name of the Lord. Thank you so much, Elder Charlotte. Um, uh, I, I want to say that I'm really humbled and honoured that you have um, asked me to be part of this poor consecration. Um, I don't know about anybody else on this um, um, uh, stream this morning, but I know that God has done something in my life, even yeah. from Monday. Um, so I just want to thank you. It is right on time. It is the set time and it is right on time. And this is what the body of Christ needs right now, just to go into that time of consecration. Um, I'm from a Jamaican background, and as my parents would say, that's how I know it. Um, mm -hmm. so God has been very good. I pray that the Lord will bless you, absolutely bless you. Um, I want to say that this morning, 
um, you came to my mind and I just heard God say, this is the first in the order of. This is the first in the order of. Just like Samuel was the first in the order of the prophets. This is the first in the order of. And I don't know what your plans are around this, what you want to do, but God said, do it. This is the first in the order of. He's doing a new thing. It seems like an old thing because it's taking us back to where we need to be. But it's a new thing and the body of Christ. You know, I was thinking that um, the UK was one where we sent out uh, missionaries way mm. back in the day. It came from the UK. And mm. just like the changing of the guard with the royal family and everything going on, mm. he's now going to be sending out again right from here. And what we need to do, this consecration is the first in the order of. So watch, everyone online, watch, watch and see what God will do. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't know what you stirred up, but I know mm. God. And I, and I hear him say mm. to you, stand. stand. Mm. I see a wind coming, but I see you standing. Stand. stand. And it might not be just the wind of the Holy Spirit. There's a wind, a shift going to come because the enemy is not pleased, but stand, stand around, stand in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. I receive the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are, just raise your hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am a woman of worship. I'm a woman of praise. And we're just going to start today before I do anything. The Bible talks about enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So um, the praise there is the is the tolder, it's the lifting up the hands in thanksgiving. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for a time where we can gather together again, wherever we may be, Lord God. We may not physically be together but Lord in your spirit we're together and so we thank you Holy Spirit you are the great I am you are the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley you are the bright and morning star you're my peacekeeper Lord God you're my way maker father we give you the glory father we give you the praise this Thursday morning we thank you Lord God you are the king of kings and the lord of lords you are El Shaddai you are Adonai our lord you are our provider you Lord Jesus are our joy and our righteousness you are our healer father God, you reign on high. You are my love, Lord Jesus. You are everything more to me and beyond. You are my father. Father God, we praise you. We honor you. We worship you. We lift you up. King of kings, Lord God, majesty, we bow before you. Father God, we lift you up, Lord God, above the heavens, Lord God. Who is there beside you? None other can stand before you. God, there is none other but you, Jesus. And we give you the glory. We we give you the praise, hallelujah. We worship you, hallelujah. We lift you up, hallelujah. We bless your name, hallelujah. We set you on high, Lord God. We raise you up, Lord God, above all things, Lord God, above all of our circumstances, above, above our pain, Lord God, above, above, Lord, our sickness, Lord God above, Lord God, what we're going through, above our family, Lord God, above our jobs, Lord God, above our finances, Lord God, above everything, Lord God, we raise you up, Lord God, and we set you on high, and we give you the glory, God, we give you the praise, hallelujah, we glorify you, hallelujah, Lord, you are our maker, you are the creator, you are the holy one of Israel, Lord God, Shiloh, Lord God, we bless your name. We bless your name and we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God. And we come again, Lord God, one more time before you. God, speak, Lord God, as you have spoken, Lord, throughout this week, continue to speak. God, your people are hungry for a word. They're hungry to know, Lord God, where they need to be. They're hungry to understand their assignments. They're hungry to understand what you have gifted them to do, what 
their calling and their purposes are. They're hungry, Lord God, to hear from you today. So, Father God, we've heard, Lord, from Monday through to Wednesday, Lord God, but it's another day. It's a new day, Lord God, and we're asking you to speak into our situations again, speak into our lives again, Lord God. Father, turn situations around. God, answer, Lord God, questions. Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen, 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 amen. Just clap your hands wherever you may be. Just clap your hands, raise your hands in the wherever you are, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, even if you're at work, I know, just, just lift your hands and just say hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to take too much of your time. I know some of you may have to go to work after this, but I know that the Lord's been speaking to us. Ooh, bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. I know he's been speaking to us throughout the week. Um, I'm hungry for more. I don't know about you. I'm not going to sit here and say he hasn't done anything in my life. There has been a shift. I felt a change. He has spoken. I just, I, I feel like I'm in consecration. I was saying to um, Elder Charlotte earlier, um, I know it's not a conference, but I feel like I'm in retreat. I feel like I'm in a conference, even though the world is still going on. I'm still going to work. I'm still doing housework. I'm still doing things. My life is still going on, but I feel like I'm in a conference. I feel like I'm in a retreat. I feel that God is just speaking and he's doing what he's doing. It's a set time. I have been spoken to, I have been ministered to, I have had to repent of some things. And even today, even when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. I've had to repent of some things. I have been in tears. I have been before the throne room of heaven. Um, even now I feel his Holy Spirit. I just, I wanna cry. I'm not a cry baby as much, but when when the Holy Spirit hits me, I wanna cry. I, I don't know what to do with myself. And that's how I felt this week. I just feel like we're in the presence of the Lord. Don't take it lightly what's happening. There is a change in your situation. There is a change. There's a change in, in what you're doing. There's a change in your Christendom. There is a change in your yes. There's a different type of yes. There's a yes that's coming out of your body. There's something that's changed. There's something that's shifted and let the Lord continue to do it. So well, hallelujah. Today, uh, the theme for my 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 segment is purifying our sound for the restoration of the travail purifying our sound for the restoration of the travail hallelujah um i've got two scriptures that i want to put before you um and then i'm just going to lay on um out to you what god has put on my heart um, I don't know how it's going to flow. I'm really in the hands of the Lord at the moment, how it's going to flow. I don't know if I'm going to speak and pray or we're going to pray throughout of this, but whatever the Lord wants to do, he's going to do, and we're going to get through this. So um, the theme and the key scripture is Isaiah 66, verse 77, sorry, verses seven to nine. And it says, before, and I, I'm reading from the King James Version. So most of the time I'll be re reading from the King James Version. Um, I did linguistics. I love language. I, I studied it at university. So I'm a, I'm a language person. So I know some of you don't, may not understand as much the um, King James Version, but I love it. This is, I just love the language of it. I will, where necessary, where I think that um, another version can bring it out a little bit more. I will tell you what that version is, but I will be reading from the King James or the New King James Version. But I think it's quite um, clear what I will be saying. So Isaiah 66 verses seven to nine, hallelujah says, before she travailed, she brought forth. And before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth 
and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? I'm going to read that again. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith God? That's a question. Shall I bring to birth? Shall I bring you to a place of birthing, but you don't bring forth? And shall I cause you to bring forth and then stop your womb, make you barren, says God. The next scripture is Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we should or as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit himself stands in the gap and makes intercession for us when we don't know what we should be praying for. And he makes that intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So before I go on, and for those of you that know me, uh, I just want to say greetings to everyone. I want to say greetings to my bishop as well for allowing us or allowing me to be here. But wherever you are, greetings. I, I know it's some names. I just want to say hi. I haven't seen you in a while, but hi to everyone. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to look at some dictionary definitions before we go on. Um, and the way that I look, I look at key words. Um, and remember that the theme is purifying our sound for the sap, for the restoration of the travail. So the words that I'm going to look at is purify. I'm going to look at sound. And then I'm going to look at travail today. And then we're going to see where the Lord will lead us. So purify. And one of the things that I do is I don't always go first to the Bible. I always look at dictionary definitions first, and then I, I, I go back to the Bible. And so I looked at the dictionary and I said, well, what does purify mean um, in respect to uh, 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 the dictionary? And it says that it is to remove contaminants from something, to remove contaminants from something. It means to make clean or pure, to refine to refine, to cleanse, to decontaminate, to filter, to sieve, to strain, to sift, to clarify, to clear, to freshen, to deodorize, to boil, to distill, to sanitize, to disinfect, to sterilize, to pasteurize, to fumigate, it means to extract something from or to make ceremonially clean, to bathe, to purge, to sanctify, or to exercise. Not exercise, but exorcise, to take out, to deliver, to purify. So if it is purifying, it means that there was something that was contaminating the water or whatever the item was. And so to purify it, you have to take away something that's contaminating the object or the item. And normally you hear purification to do with water. And this season is to deal with washing on um, today. And so I looked at purify and I said, okay, God, purify our sound, purifying the sound, purifying, which means that there must be a contamination in the sound. So I went to the next um, top, um, item, which is sound, and I looked in the dictionary. And I said, what does that mean, sound, sound? And the dictionary tells me it means vibrations that travel through the airwaves or another medium, and it can be heard when they reach a person's ear. So vibrations that travel through the ear. It also says 
it's produced by continuous and regular vibrations. So you're hearing me, you're hearing my sound. It's traveling through the airways and it's reaching your ear. And it is continuous and it is regular vibrations as opposed to noise. So a continuous and regular vibration and it's opposed to noise, it's not noise. And it is music and it is speech, speech, sound. It is not noise, noise, it's opposed to noise. Stay with me. And so I said, okay, so I thought noise would be sound. And he said, well, it is sound, but the sound that I'm talking about is not noise. So I said, well, what is noise? <laughs> and he says, it's a sound, but it's one that is loud and unpleasant. <laughs> it causes a disturbance. It can be classed as a din, hubbub, clamor, commotion, pandemonium, clangor, crash, clatter, babble, yelling, shouting, I like this word, bangerang. And then he said, it's also, this is a dictionary. And this is not a Christian dictionary. It says it's classed as Babel. Babel. Noise is classed as Babel. And now we know the story of the Tower of Babel where they were trying to reach God. And God says, no, 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 no. So he interrupted their language and caused confusion. And what noise does is cause confusion. So they all started talking a different language and where they were together now, they couldn't understand each other. And the dictionary says, that's noise, Babel, commotion, co confusion. It is a sound that is unwanted, mainly because it cannot be heard, because there is a mixing of sounds due to a loud and jarring nature of the sound, noise. Sound which is unwanted, sound which is, 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 it cannot be heard. I cannot hear your sound because there's a mixing of sounds or the sound is loud and it's jarring to the nature of the sound that I need to get through. My God, my God. And when I heard this, I said, okay, God, okay, what are you trying to tell us in this season? And he says, I need to purify the sound of my people. But what is happening is that the sound that they're giving is not the sound that I need. It is a noise that they're giving. Because remember I said that the sound comes with speech. You use your tongue, tongue in speech. And so he's saying that the sound that they're giving off is noise because there's a mixture of the sound that is coming out of their mouth. There's a mixture of the tongue. And I said, well, God, what's them, what are they mixing with? What are we mixing with? And he said, go back to the Bible, he said, what's coming out of their, their tongue. So at one end, they're trying to reach me and they're trying to pray, but they have backbiting. Backbiting is coming out of their tongue. So they're mixing the sound. So on one hand, they're saying, God, I worship you and I'm gonna do what you say that we have to do. But on the other hand, there's backbiting or slander or libel, or they're maliciously talking about someone behind their back. And so he gave me Proverbs 25, 23. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures here, but you can replay this. It says, the north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. So they're mixing the sound of worship, of prayer and backbiting. So it's coming off as noise. And then he said, if we're not backbiting, then we're being deceitful with our tongue. Micah 6, verse 12. For her rich men are full of violence, her inhabitants have spoken lies, and their tongue, remember speech, tongue, is deceitful 
in their mouth. That's Micah 6 verse 12. So they're mixing the worship and the praise of me. Now, not with just with backbiting, but there's deceitfulness coming out of their tongue. So it's creating noise. And then I said, okay, God, what else? And he said, and some of them are double-tongued, double-tongued, double-tongued. Some of us are double-tongued. Psalms 100. And 20 verse 3, I'm reading this from the NIV. Oh, oh, I'm um, sorry, First Timothy 3 verse 8. Double tongue means being hypocritical. So likewise, deacons, deacons, so none of us are exempt. He's talking now with those that have titles. He's saying, you must be reverent. You, you mustn't be double tongued, not given to too much wine, not greedy for money. He's saying, stop being hypocritical. Stop being hypocritical because it's becoming noise. Because you leaders... Us leaders, we're, we're getting up and we're speaking to the people, but we're being double-tongued, we're being hypocritical about it. So we're telling them, you must do this. But on the other hand, we're doing something else or we're telling somebody else that we need to do this. So he's, he's saying, stop being double-tongued, stop being hypocritical because it's coming up as noise, there's noise. And he's saying, some of them are being false. 100, Psalms 120 verse three. Oh, deceptive tongue, what will God do to you? How will he increase your punishment? He says, some of us have been flattering with our tongue. So um, Psalms 12, verse 3, may the Lord cut off flattering lips um, and the tongue that speaks proud things. We like, we like to flatter people because if we flatter them, we get what we want. And, you know, um, you know, some people say it's kissing up to someone and we flatter people when we don't mean it. We don't mean it. So this is not, I think you're beautiful and we mean it and, and it's off of humility, but this is flattering because we want something and we, we need something from you. So we'll talk up even though our, our hearts are far from it, but our mouth is saying something else. He says, some have lying tongues, lying tongues, Proverbs 12, 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully have his sound. Um, are his delight. So we're mixing that, mixing that sound. Some of us are muttering, <laughs> muttering. We don't, we don't like it. So we mutter and we, we gossip and we mutter, mutter, mutter under our breath. So we're not saying it out loud, but we mutter, mutter, mutter about leaders. We mutter about our brother. We mutter about our sister. We mutter about everything. And we, we complain, 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 complain and complain. And God says, I don't like complainers. Stop it. Um, Isaiah 59 verse 3 says, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversities. Um, and that's perverse is one of them. And some of us are sharp with our tongues. Hallelujah. We are critical and we are cruel. And we put it under the guise of no, you have to speak the truth. So I'm going to speak the truth. But they're speaking the truth in love. And they're speaking the truth with a sharp tongue that is critical and that is cruel, that will destroy people. Psalms 140 verse 3 says, they make their tongues as sharp as serpents. The poison of vipers is on their lips. And that sharpness, that critical, that you, you cruel for the sake of being cruel. This is not cruel. Um, this is not critical as in constructive critical. We speak because we want to bring people down. And God says, all this is noise because you're coming and you're praying and you're worshiping, but at the same time with the same tongue, you are criticizing and you're being sharp and you're lying and you're being hypocritical and you're and you're being perverse and and you're muttering and complaining with the same tongue the bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue so he says i need in this time of consecration <laughs> my mark was so to cover your tongues my mark is it i need to bring a deliverance to your tongues and i'm to purify the sound that is coming out of your mouth. That your speech speaks God's righteousness. Psalms 35 verse 28. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness. That your tongue will speak of God's wisdom. Psalms 37 verse 30. The mouths of the righteous shall utter wisdom. And their tongues speak what is just. Yes, 
that your tongue will sing praises, true praises. Psalms 126 verse 2, it says, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them, that your tongue won't be cruel, but that your tongue will sing and speak kindness. Proverbs 31 verse 36. She opens her mouth with, with, with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Hallelujah. And that your tongue will confess Christ always, will show forth Christ always. Philippians 2 verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I want you right now to just, just touch your tongue. Just touch it. Say, God, anoint my tongue. Anoint my tongue. Anoint my mouth. Ya makoso. I consecrate my mouth and my tongue to you, God. I consecrate it to you, Father. Lord God, where I have done wrong, where I have brought down, Lord God. Um, I think it was Elder Winita that says on, on, on Tuesday, she said, where we want to prove that we're all right, where even though we are in the right and we know we're in the right, but we want to prove it. So we will have said something against the brother or sister. And we were almost justified. I, I, I teach um, at, at the Bible school that um, there's such a thing called situation ethics, which means that I, my, I am justified to do what I'm doing by my situation. My situation makes it right for me to do certain things or to say certain things. So some of us have been in the right. We have been done hard, have been hard done by. We have absolutely, we're in the right. But we try and justify what we have said by bringing down someone by the situation. And, and God said, no, I don't need you to say that. I need you to speak life. I need you to speak forgiveness. I need you to speak to that person love. It is me that will have vengeance, not you. Let me do the work. You do and you show forth the character of, the, of, of God. So I, I declare right now that your mouth be consecrated, that your tongue be consecrated. So it is no more a noise unto God. You are not mixing the speech. You are not mixing the sound, but your sound will become clear, that your sound will be decontaminated by what the devil is trying to do, that you will purify your sound, that your sound will be sanctified, that your sound will be cleansed, that your sound will be made pure. We speak it done. We come against every plan of the enemy to destroy people with the tongue. Yamako Soto, my tongue belongs to God. Our tongues belong to God. Our mouth belongs to God. Our sound belongs to God. We will speak what God tells us to speak. And if God has not told us to speak, we will shut our mouth and we will keep it quiet. We speak that now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I understand that death and life is in the power of the tongue. I understand that my sound has to echo the sound of heaven, that my sound, I have to speak on the earth what God is speaking in heaven. So let it be on the earth as it is in heaven. So let it be on the earth as it is in heaven. Let my words reflect what heaven declares. Let my words speak what heaven declares, purify our sound, God. Purify our sound. Because only then, only then, only then can we get into the travail. Only then that can we stand before you. Hallelujah. Purify the mouth. The mouth belongs to God. My sound. So when it goes through the airwaves, because what's happening? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. What's happening? We understand that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. Remember what I said, that sound is a vibration that travels through the air. And what has been happening, because there is a mixture of sound, the devil, the prince and power of the air, all that's happening, nothing is happening because he's controlling that, that, that airwaves. God says, I need a sound that will bypass 
the enemy that will be bypass what he's trying to do. I want a sound that directly links you to heaven, that vibrates through what the enemy is doing in the airwaves, that will vibrate. And that's why what was happening with Daniel when uh, Michael says that, uh, that your prayer was heard. <laughs> your prayer was already heard. Your prayer was heard, but the Prince of Persia was trying to stop what was happening. And the reason why Daniel's prayer was heard because the sound was pure. And so he said that your sound had already got to heaven, but the Prince of Persia that was affecting the airway was trying to stop it. So I had to wrestle him. God couldn't wrestle, the Michael couldn't wrestle on our behalf because some of our sound was noise. And so it was just hitting airways and bouncing back because it became noise. We were in Babel confusion. To God, this is confusion. You're telling me to bless you, but at the same time, you're telling me to curse somebody else. You want blessings, but you want cursing for someone else. You want joy, but you want sadness for someone else. You want me to give life for you, but you want death to someone else. Not so, says God. Stop mixing the sound, says God. Let your sound be decontaminated. And I speak today of decontamination. A decontamination of our sound. Some of you need to put down the phone. Mama Siti Kiyomasa. Put down your phone. Yamamasa Tokui. You know, Hanamasa. Some of us rush and we pick up the phone because we want to hear what our neighbor is saying about the other person. Oh, guess what? You never guess what happened now and whatever else. And we want to gossip and we bring down people. And the person is just trying to live. And we're bringing them down. So put down the phone. I hear God say, lose the number. Lose that number. Lose it. Stop it. You know, I watch sometimes those, those um, where, where they talk about, you know, where people are trying to hack into your phone and trying to get your money and they've got your number. So they ring you up. And um, there, there's one that's called um, where they deal with love and, and they say that they love you. And the next minute they're asking for money. And, and the people that are looking at it, they say, okay, you know, this was a scam, don't you? Well, the first thing you have to do is delete the number. Delete the number. If you want to be free from this person, delete the number. And I hear God say, there's some of us that have relationships with people and you know it's based on gossip. You know it's based on gossip. You know that they want to give you the latest. They want to talk and you get into your covers and your, and your, your little cliques and you talk about people. And God said, delete, block, delete, block the number now. Because God says, where I'm taking you, I can't have noise. I can't have noise. And that's why I can't bless you. And that's why I can't give you what you need because it's noise. It's noise. It's confusion. So I don't know. You're telling me to do this and you're telling me to do that. Make up your mind. What do you want? So God says, block the number. Yamako so. I don't know who it is. Block the number. Kianamasa. Pick up your phone now. Kianamasa. Block the number. Kianamasa. And they're going to say, I've been trying to get you. Delete, delete, delete. Say, I don't, oh, you know, God told me right now, I just got to concentrate on him, but block the number. I don't know who it is, but block the number. You know, it's no good thing. You know, it's no good thing. You never speak joy. You never speak peace. You know, it's no good thing. Purify your sound. Purify your sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I don't know why he's keeping me here. Purify yourself. God, we speak, Lord God. God, I pray, Lord God, that you will block. Right now, my God, my God, my God. I hear, yes, God, I hear. I hear, I hear, I hear. I hear them say, but it's my friend. And God said it was never a friend. They were never a friend. It is a gossip. 
Oh, my mark circle, it was never a friend. Mama circle, because a friend would want the best for you. Oh, mama circle, but the friend wants you on their side. So you all get in a clique. Oh, mama because you think you're against. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. But God said, no, oh, mama in this season, oh, mama I need to bring, I need you to bring life, oh, mama to the person you're talking about. Oh, mama kasa, I need you to bring life to that person. I need you to bring life to that person, not talk about them, but bring life to that person. Your job Amasa, is not to get in the clique and to talk and destroy, but your job is to bring life. Amasa to kure mesi. Ah, mama koso to kosa. Ah, mama sa kasure mesa. Your job is to bring life, to bring life, to bring life to the person, to bring life, to bring life. To bring life. Amamasa. Oh, it's gonna be hard. Amamasa takaso. Yes, it's gonna be hard. Amamasa tokosa. But in this season, God has said, if you obey me, it's about obedience. Amasa, your job is to bring life. Amasa. So the very person, <laughs> and even if they've wronged you, ah, even if they've said something about you, ah, even if they have wronged you, God said no. I want you to turn around. Ah, oh, my God, my God. Yes, God. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Come out, come out, come out. God said, take me. Ah, oh, they killed me. Mm -hmm. Israel put me on the cross, but I came to give them life. <laughs> Not a bad word could I speak against it because it was my destiny. And God said, watch when you turn around and bring life, watch what I will do for you. I don't know why he's keeping me here. I don't know why he's keeping here. We break it, Lord God, we break it. Jesus, do it, Lord, do it, God. Yes, do it, yes, do it, yes, do it, yes, do it, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Delete Hamasa. Block. Come out of the clique. Come out from among them. Be separated, God said. Come out from among them and be separated. I have called you. Ah, I have sanctified you and I've separated you. God said, come out. Purify your sound. Purify the sound. Pray, pray, pray. Those of you that are intercessors, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Our sound will be heard. We come against the prince of the power of the air. Our voice will be heard. We go up into heaven. We speak that the angels will fight on our behalf. We speak it down. We speak it down now, Lord God. My God, my God, my God. Do a deliverance, Lord God. Touch our mouth, Lord God. Lord God, let there be life coming out of the mouth, Lord God. Let there be, Lord, restoration, Lord God, of your sound, Lord God. Restoration, Lord God. Revive our tongues to speak the joys of the Lord. Revive our tongues to speak of your worship. Revive our tongues to speak life and love, Lord God. Revive our tongues to speak peace, 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 peace. Peace, 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 peace to the situation. Lord God, revive us, revive us, revive us again. Revive us again. My God, my God, revive us again. Lord, revive us again. Yes, I hear that. Yes, Raki success. Ah, season with salt. Mm, Lord God, season it. And what, season, what salt does, it not just bring flavor. Oh my God, my God. It not only just brings flavor, but it also is something that, oh God, that will keep, Lord, and will preserve. Lord, season my tongue with the salt of your word. Ah, that I will speak life from Marka City. Oh, Mama City. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, I don't know what God wants to say. Ooh. Jesus, glory to God. I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you, God. I thank you for the deliverance. 
I thank you for the de deliverance of my tongue. I thank you for the purification of my tongue. I thank you for the deliverance of our tongues. I thank you for the deliverance of our tongues and the purification of our tongues. Oh my God that our sound is a different sound. Ah, my casa. I want to, ooh, in the last sort of five minutes or so, I want to touch on the travail a little bit because we're, we're closing out. We're in, we're in the final stages. Tomorrow's the last day. I know we're going into, 20, into the all night and we finish on, on Sunday, Saturday, sorry. But, but we are literally going into the last day and we are therefore in the travail. <laughs> and God said, I'm, I'm causing you to give birth. You've not quite given birth yet. Some of us have not quite given birth yet, but we're in the travail stage, <laughs> the pains of childbirth. And um, I, I want to give you my story because I, I don't know what Elder Charlotte knew when she gave me this topic, but I have given birth twice, twice, twice. Ah, now that my sound is pure, I need to, to talk about the travail a little bit. I've given birth twice and twice my birth, my labors were natural. I had no painkillers at all. So God said, you're qualified to talk about this because there was no numbing. There was no numbing of the pain. And some of us have to go through the pain of the childbirth, have to go through the pain of what God is doing. And God said, and you're, you're desperate. I was desperate <laughs> for painkillers. I, I even asked the midwife at one stage, give me Nurofen. I, I need Nurofen. And, and no, hear me by the Holy Spirit. If somebody had come and said, I'll give you drugs, I would have taken the drugs. That's how much I was in pain. And she said, you're too far gone. You're too far gone. No, nothing that we give you is going to numb the pain right now. And so God is saying to some of us, some of us are going through a pain. Hmm. It's the pain. And, and you want God to stop it. And you're saying, God, I need you to stop it. And God says, you're too far gone. You're nearly there. You're just about there. And so some of us are in the travail and I was in the travail and I was like, God, what does this mean? And I, I can't go through it all now just because of time. But I want to talk to you about this, the, the sound of the travail, the sound. We're dealing with sound. And so I looked at the word travail and the travail that we're talking about, that we talked about um, in Isaiah early on, earlier on. It comes from a, a, a word that says chul or cool in the Bible. And that means to twist or to whirl in a circular or spiral manner, uh, to dance, to, to writhe in pain or, or, or fear. Uh, and it's that w when I was in labor, oh, my God, I couldn't sit still. So I, I kept moving. Huh? And, I, and the pain was hitting me and I kept moving and, I, and, and they, they, I, they, tr they set me up. This is how quick my labors were. Um, I had home births. I wasn't even in hospital. And, and they set me up in the living room and they put everything out in the living room and they set me up in the living room and, 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 and the plastic was put down and the towels were put down and the water was put down and, and the wooden wife put all her, 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 her utensils down and they set me up in the living room and I, and, and, and I went to the to the living room and I, and I couldn't get out of the living room. And, I, and then I said, no, I can't do it in the living room. And I couldn't sit down in the living room and, and I had to come out of the living room and I was walking around. We were in a flat at the time and I was like, God, and the, the pain. And, 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 and I went into the bathroom and, and they said, OK, we'll we'll set the bath for you and, 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 and we'll put you in water because that helps alleviate the pain. And they, they ran the bath and they set up the water and and they put me in the bath and I, I went and sat down in the bath and then I said no I can't sit down in the bath and I got back up again and then I had to get out of the bath and and I walked around and and the pain and I, I was reading like I said it means to twist and to whirl some of us in prayer were pushing through and we're like God why can't I just stand and pray God says you're in a travail you're in the, the pain of the travail and, and God says, I'm bringing to birth some of your giftings and I'm bringing to birth ministry and I'm bringing to birth deliverance and I'm bringing to birth some things. So you're going to have to move and just like I'm moving and I'm restricted by a table now, but some of you have to get up and just and walk and you're going to have to uh, 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 work it out because it's too much, God. Father God is too much. And God says, no, you're too far. I'm not numbing this because I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to feel it because this is your deliverance. And so they, they moved me around. And in the end, I gave birth, especially for my son, in the bathroom. 
and I was kneeling and, you know, that the, the, when you go into the maternity ward and they talk about, you know, people being on the back, that's not natural. And so I had to kneel and I'm talking about the sound of the travail. I thought I was screaming at the top of my voice. <laughs> I thought I was screaming and it was four or five o'clock in the morning with my son and we were in a flat. So I was thinking that the whole of the apartment block could hear me screaming. And when I finished, my husband and the midwife says, you weren't screaming. What you were doing is moaning and you were kind of like, mm, mm. and the sound of the travail. Remember I talked about sounds and there's a mixture of sounds and there's certain sounds when you're in travail, this is not the sound or the shout of worship and praise. This is a targeted sound. And some of you are going through a sound where there's a sound of mm, mm. Some of us is not even a mm, or a groan. The, the spirit is groaning. It's a and a and a and a, that's the sound. And God says the sound in this season is the sound of travail, it's a targeted sound. Some of us have to give the target sound. Don't mix the sound, not the sound of praise. It's not the sound of praise now. And it's not the sound of the shout. Because even if you go into a maternity um, ward and you hear someone screaming, you know that's to do with birth. And God says, some of you are going through a birthing right now. And so your sound has been changing throughout this week. Your sound, your tongues have been changing this week. Some of you have got a new tongue. A new way of speaking. The Holy Spirit is speaking in a new tongue. No, you're not going crazy. You're in labor. You're in travail. Yamako sotu kura masa. And so it's a new sound. It's a targeted sound. And some of you are groaning and you're like, God, why am I groaning? You don't understand the groaning. Ooh. And some of you are groaning. Amamasa. I need you to join me. Ooh. Some of you is like, oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Amamaso. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, God. Mm, Jesus. Oh, God. Mm, Jesus. Oh, God. Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Some of you are. Ooh. Some of you are. Mm. And God says, keep doing it. Mama soto. Yes. Amakoto. Mm, Jesus. Your gift is coming forth. Ah, Jesus. Your gift is coming forth. Ah, Jesus. Mama Kosoto, it's coming, it's coming. And God said, Will I bring you to this part of birthing mm, and not bring forth? Ah, Masoto Kuramasa, my time is finished. Ana Masa, I'm about to hand over. But one thing God told me there are three things that happen when people go into travail naturally. Some people get fearful. They're fearful of the pain. They're fearful of what's happening. And fear, fear then paralyzes them. And it can demoralize you. But God told me to tell you, he has not given you a spirit of fear. Don't be frightened of what's about to be birthed in you. Yamakoso, do not be fearful. Hamasa takasa, because when it's over, there is pure joy. God says, I am not bringing you this far to give you a stillbirth. Hamasa, do not be fearful of the pain. Hamasa, because joy is at the end of the pain. The other thing that comes, oh, in the natural, is the pain. They think it's painful. But what this done does, because you're going through the pain, it brings spiritual fatigue, and then it brings defensiveness and protectiveness. And so we don't want to go through the pain. And some of us are saying, God, I'm tired of the pain. I cannot do this no more. Just when you're in labor, God, I cannot do it no more. God, I cannot push no more. God, there's too much pain, too much pain, too much pain. Father, I cannot do it. And it disturbs the mental being of you because you're tired. You cannot go through the pain anymore. And God said, oh, you persevere. My grace is sufficient for you. 
he says you can overcome it through the prayer. He says, is there not a balm in Gilead that can help you through the pain? Am I not here to deliver you through the pain? Push through it, push through it. And then the other thing that happens in the natural, some births can be hazardous. Oh, mama. They can be dangerous. They can be risky. And so that makes us fearful, especially if we've lost before, especially if some of us have lost children before. Then we are scared and it becomes hazardous and we are try we, we, we are known as a high-risk birth because there's a high risk of stillbirth either and, and death to the child or death to you. But God said in this season, there will be no death, no death no stillbirth, no child shall die. What you are birthing shall not die this season. Some of us before we have got to this stage spiritually and we have quenched it and then it has been destroyed. We have been, it, our gifting, what we have birthed has been destroyed by people. We birthed it and people talked about us. So we stopped what we were doing. We birthed it and we became prophets, but because people talked about us, we shut our mouth and God said, I will have none of that this time. This time when you give, give birth, when you give birth to what I've given in you, there will be no death, no death to you and no death to the baby, but there will be life. There will be life this time around. No word, no devil in hell shall kill what I've put in, in front of you. And you will declare the word of the Lord. Your gift shall make room for you. Your business shall thrive. You shall be who God said you shall be. There will be no hazardous birth. God says, will I bring you to this stage and not make you bring forth? And will you bring forth? And I, I shut your womb. It shall not happen. Not this time. So, saints of God, my time is over. I'm going to hand over to Elder Charlotte. But I want to say, Kamasoto, the sound has now purified. And now there's a targeted sound. This, Amaso, target your sound. It's the sound of the travail. And this time you shall give birth. This time you shall give birth. This time you shall go through and this time there shall be life. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for purifying our sound. We thank you for the sound of the travail. We thank you for the sound of the travail. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Amma. Jesus, we thank you for the sound of the travail. We thank you for what you are doing. Hama Kina Mosata. Oh, Jesus, Akiana Massa. Perfect God, Amma City Kiona Massa. Perfect God, Amasa Takura Masa. Perfect. I see some of you on your knees right now. Oh, Jesus. I am here as a midwife, Amaso. And I'm telling you to push, Masa Kutu. Push, Damamasa. Push, Kananama City. It is now time to push, Ananamaso. Push it through, Yanama City. Push it through. Kianamasa. We will bring to birth. Amasa. The head is there. Kia. You are fully dilated. Anamasa takosa. It is time. It is time. It is time. Amasu. Lord, bring it to birth. Ah, push. Father, we thank you. Yanamasi. We thank you, Jesus. Yanamakutanama city. Yanamasa. Ooh, Kamasa. Oh, Kiana Mesa, my time is over. Masi Tikiana Masa. Push it on a moose at Kiana Masa. Push Kiana Masa. Bring it to birth, Jesus. Sada Katana Maso. Bring the prophet to birth. Amasa. Bring the apostle to birth. Yana Masa. 
Bring the pastor to birth. city. Bring the evangelist to birth. Bring the teacher to birth. Yes. Yes. Bring, Lord God, the gifts of healing to birth. Bring faith to birth. Bring the discernment of spirit to birth. Bring wisdom to birth. The word of knowledge to birth. The gift of giving to birth. Bring dunamis, the miracle working power, the gifts to birth. Bring to birth. Push, brethren. Pushing this time of consecration. Amaso. Push to birth. Anamasa. Midwives work with me, Jesus. Midwives help those that are birthing. Amasa. Bring them to birth. Amaso. Tukura. Amasa. Midwives garden break. Midwives. I hear God say I'm birthing midwives in the kingdom right now. I'm bringing back the midwives that will help you to push. <laughs> I am bringing midwives. Midwives. Spiritual midwives that are going to help you to push. Now hear me. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. This is not your prayer partner. This is not your birthing partner. They're not here to hold your hand. They are here when you say, I can't push no more. This midwife is going to tell you, you don't tell me you're tired. Just one more push. They're not here to be your friend. They're not your birthing partner. This is not the prayer partner. This is the one that's not your friend. These are the ones that are going to push you into your birth this is the one as my brother would say that's at the working end they're not there beside you holding your hand through the birth they are there because they can see what is happening they can see what god is doing so they're not here to tell you to lie down because you're feeling tired they're not there to mop your brow they're there to tell you to push and then they're there to tell you this is not the time to push some of us have aborted because we have pushed before the time some of us have torn ourselves because we have pushed before the time and when the spiritual wid midwife have told you not yet we seem to think oh they're trying to stop our gifting and they've tried to stop what God is doing in my life they were not there to stop it they were there to tell you it's not time it is not time yet because if you push before your time you are gonna give birth to a dead baby you are going to give stillbirth. You are going to tear and you're going to destroy yourself. You're going to kill what God has put in front of you. So this stillbirth is not going to happen because God is raising spiritual midwives that are going to tell you, stop the nonsense. It is time to push. They are there to tell you, stop. Don't push anymore. They are there to tell you, now pant. Now breathe. Now pant. Stop pushing. Pant. Stop pushing. Pant. They're here to tell you, feel the pain. Now is the time to push. They are working with you. God's putting people in your life. They are already there, but you didn't want to hear them. They are already there, but you didn't want to know because they're not mopping your brow and sitting beside you and holding your hand and trying to help you through it and telling you, no, it's time to rest. That is your prayer partner. That is the prayer partner that you want, that you want to help you and that you want to pray you through, that you want what you to, to that you want them to say, yes, it's time. Yes, God, take away, Lord, the pain from them. That is your prayer partner. What I am praying and what God told me to tell you right now. Yes, God, I hear you. Spiritual midwives are coming in your life and they're not here to help you. They're not here to stroke your ego. They are here because they see the anointing of God on their life and they see the baby that is to come and they're going to bring it out and they're going to take you through in Jesus name 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Charlotte, thank you, God. I'm handing back. Some of you, you need to stay in this position because God is not finished. There is a birthing to be done. Some of you need to re-hear the word throughout this day. Some of you, you some labors. <laughs> oh God, I hear you. I'm trying to finish. I am, I'm trying to be obedient. Some of you, your labor, like mine, was quick. I had a four hour labor and I have a 40 minute labor. That was my labor. But my nine months of pregnancy was dealt with sickness. So I had a fast labor. But some, my mother, went through a 24-hour labor with me. And some people I hear go through 48 hours of labor. Some of you, it's going to be quick. Some of you have already pushed through by the time this is finished. Some of you, it's going to take you all day to push through. Some of you, it's going to take till tomorrow for you to bring forth. Some of you, it will be in the all night tomorrow to bring forth. Some of you will be Saturday morning. Some of you will be Sunday. But whatever, whatever day, no two labors are the same. God said, push. Whatever I do, whether it's quick or whether it's longer, push, 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 because a baby will be born in Jesus' name. Elder Charlotte, I hand over to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 let it go, let it go, stop quenching, and an amass to Ah, stop quenching, and an Yes, I know it's painful. I'm a massa tucker. Yes, I'm scared. And I'm a mama massa. Yes, I know you've lost before. God said, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. God said, Not this time, push. I will bring it to birth. I will bring it to birth. I will bring it to birth. This time. This time. This time you shall bring forth God. And this time that Samuel shall come forth. This time, Hannah. <laughs> yes, you were barren before. <laughs> Hannah, Yanamasa. But Samuel is coming. Nanamasa. Samuel is coming. <laughs> yes, Samuel is coming. Namaso. I am bringing it to birth. I'm a massa. Pinel won't laugh anymore, says God. Namaso. They will no more call you barren, Hannah Maso. Watch and see. Push in Jesus' name. I'm Maso. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Sound of the travail. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this sound of the travail. Thank you for this sound. Hallelujah. Thank you for this push today, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We thank him. We thank him. Thank you, Jesus. My God, we thank God. <clears throat> oh, the spirit of the Lord is moving. When I tell you the spirit of the Lord is moving. I heard screams. I heard shouts. I heard travails in the spirit. There was a push and some of you were still pushing. You're still pushing even now. And I want to break that flow. So keep pushing. Release your sound. Release your sound. Release that pure sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You're in the pain of the travail. And you're too far gone to stop. You have to feel your deliverance. Mm. Elder Sonia Hogg. I personally, for my own life, I want to thank you for my own life, for my own life, what you've done for my own life this morning. And I want to say this before I close. <clears throat> the last few days I felt this shaking in my spirit, this trembling. And... I was saying, God, what is this trembling? What is this trembling in my spirit? But as you began to teach today, I was not in the upright position. I was prostrate right here in the, in the chair, which is why we couldn't hand over before. The Holy Ghost just met with me where I was, and I realized that that shaking was the travail that needed to come out of me. So I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to you this morning. I want to say thank you for your obedience. I want to say thank you. Oh, I want to say thank you. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. But this morning, we thank God that he has used you to be a midwife to many of us this morning. Some of us have brought forth this morning, even in the process of this prayer. I want to say personal thank you to you, woman of God. May the Lord do for you, even as you have prayed for us this morning. May there be a travail that brings forth that which God wants to bring forth from you, Elder Sonia Hogg, in this season. We know we have need of you. We have need of you, woman of God. We have need of you. The kingdom has need of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. Please know we love you. We honor the gift of God on your life and the call that he has placed on you in this season. Hallelujah. May God use you as a midwife to many in this season. We love you. We pray God will replenish you and pour into you, even as you have poured out this morning. Hallelujah. 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 May he strengthen you. Hallelujah. May he cover you and protect you. Hallelujah. May people say there's a different sound that comes from you in this season. And we stand in agreement with what heaven is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, the Holy Spirit is moving and we have enjoyed a fresh and rich outpouring of his spirit this morning. The woman of God has spoken so powerfully and God has spoken so powerfully to us. 
Some of you need to watch this back. You need to go back. You need to listen back. You need to hear with sensitivity everything that God is ministering to your hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just going to close in prayer because there is nothing else left to say. There's nothing else left to say. Her call my heart. But I hit, I did hit the Lord whilst he was praying the will of God. And he said, some of you need to get to the shut in tomorrow. You need to, you need to. There are some things God needs to bring forth and you need midwives. Some of you need tangible midwives. And I see some of you changing your plans. Whatever God speaks to your hearts, obey. That's all I want to say. Obey. Amen. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Let's close in prayer. We'll be meeting back at 7 p.m. again tonight. Remember, if you do want to sow, you can. The giving is along the bottom of the screen. Amen. Some of you need to sow into, sow into the soil of what God is doing in this season. Amen. Sow in, sow in. Hallelujah. To what God is doing in this season of your life. Glory be to his name. Father, we thank you today for your fresh outpouring. We thank you for your words of truth to us. We thank, for, thank you for purifying our sound. We thank you for bringing forth the travail. We thank you that you've not just brought us, brought us to this point, but you've brought us to this point to bring forth. Father, we thank you for the bringing forth in this day, in this season of our lives. We thank you for the midwives you're appointing in our lives. We thank you for the push you're bringing forth in us. As we go forth through this day, help us to observe that which you're speaking. Help us to meditate on your word, Father God. And we will be sure to give you the glory. We'll be sure to give you the honor. And we'll be sure you, to give you the praise for that which you are bringing forth. Our Hannahs will no longer be barren, for our Samuel is coming forth. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And we will see you all at 7 p.m. tonight. Goodbye.